Well, maybe I should maybe I should tell you all the crazy things I'm working on, right? Okay. Just really quick before I started. Sure. I'm kind of like the decentralized all the thing pushers guy, uh-huh. right? So we have uh, I have this project called IDEN3, which is uh, decentralizing identity because like you know I want Dallas for charity and decentralized mm-hmm. governance models, but if we don't have identity, then it's all plutocracy, and I don't think anyone's fighting the good fight for that, right? Okay. Like let's make it so we can be ruled by the rich. Yeah. No, that's stupid. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and and, and uh, so that's a huge piece that I don't think we can have DAOs without. I don't think we can have DAOs without DAPNode or some kind of decentralized hardware system. So DAPNode is this little box you can buy that you can plug in, kind of like a miner, okay. right? Like an old ASIC miner, but instead it runs uh, proof of stake nodes and. It can run DAP helper nodes, like a status relay thing, and you can get paid to run these things. But also, it decentralizes the system. It decentralizes Infura and like all the, you know, um, it it's it kind of allows you to be a decent to be Infura for your friends and family. And then and then obviously give it or DAOifying things, and I have some cool stuff to to like jam on. Okay. With give it, you know. You know, give it. I see you tweet about give it. So like, and yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. No, I remember exactly. I did. I did a video about it like last year. So, yeah, excited to see that one roll out. Yeah. One of one of the people we're hiring right now found us through you. So, oh really? And, oh, yeah. sweet. That's yeah. very cool. And that little proposal that is hiring them, it's amazing. It's like full circle right now, <laughs> because I literally just pushed hire this guy. Right? And then now we're talking. (laughs) Nice. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode. Today, I'm very excited to have with me a Mr. Griff Green, person who I was kind of... Yeah, hi, Griff. Say hi. I should give you a chance to say hi. Hey, how's it going, guys? (laughs) Thank you for uh, taking the time to come out and uh, have a have a talk with me today. So I was kind of indirectly introduced to you back in like 2016 after the Ethereum, the DAO hack happened, and you actually did a lot of work for helping people to cl- figure out how to claim their tokens and kind of recover from the hack and, and that stuff. So I just want to thank you for your work that you did with, uh, with that. I'm sure there's a lot of people who would like to thank you for that as well. Um, so... I think that you're also like a really good example of people who just want to help people in this space and have like a good uh, experience um, and and just kind of uh, support, you know, the projects that you believe in. And so you are a project manager, inspiration man, hire man, decentralize everything kind of guy. So I, I think it's, it's really cool that you exist in this space. I'm, there's a lot of us out here, like Lane, Hudson, you know, uh, I think Mitch is doing an amazing job. There's lots of guys like me that just kind of like squeeze in the middle and find a way to help everybody, you know, stick together and, and build community here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I did a video too, like about how to like crypto hustle, like you don't have to be a coder. You don't have to be like a super mathematician to get in this space. If you're inspired by it, there's it's such a growing place that there's room for nearly any kind of skill set to take advantage of it. So I want to talk a little bit about Giveth, which is your platform for utilizing blockchain and decentralization towards uh, funding for like charities or nonprofit foundations. Um, what what inspired you to want to build a platform like this, and like how long ago? Did that happen, or, or what made you want to be a part of something like this? Well, it really came out of the DAO hack, right? When the DAO kind of exploded, uh, the White Hat group was really worried that DAOs would not have a place to experiment. Mm. And that really is the inspiration behind Give It, is to, uh, we, we thought that the, I mean, we want to make the world a better place, and we thought maybe uh, restructuring the charity model is a, a great opportunity to experiment with decentralized governance while doing good for the world, right? And so in the charity space, you kind of have this weird incentive structure where uh, companies are not actually, companies and charities are using the same business model, right? Mm-hmm. They're using the same tools, right? There's a CEO of, of all these nonprofits and they're using the corporate business model which says grow, grow, grow and get as big as possible and extract as much money as possible. And 
that's really good for getting iPhones in people's hands, but I don't think it's the best for solving like tragedy of the commons issues. Uh, for instance, if you want to uh, save some kind of river, right, and you start this big nonprofit where we want to clean this river, we want to, you know, end it, end the pollution of this river, right? And they use the corporate business model and they grow and they end up have, hiring a thousand people and you know it becomes this big industry. Then you have the CEO who, if he ever protected, like found a sustainable way to protect that river, he'd have to fire all those people, yeah. right? Yeah. Have this really nice guy who's like, yeah, I want to help. Uh, let's do it. And then he's stuck in the system where he's in a rock and a hard place. He has to make hard decisions. And it's like, okay, well, this sustainable thing could, this sustainable idea could help this river. But it would also make me have to lay off half my workforce and those people rely on me to put food on their table for their kids and their families. You know, so this system is broken. And I think crypto has an offer, a unique uh, opportunity to real to build new systems that align incentives in a better way and we're finally in giveth we actually finally have the foundation where we can start making some of these experiments so i'm really excited that's very cool so can you speak a little bit more on like the specifics of these incentive models and how they differ from like uh, typical business models that you're talking about with charities and so you know, what are we playing with with cryptocurrencies, right? Like, what are we even doing? When someone creates a cryptocurrency, what are they doing? They're creating a new economy, right? They're creating a new form of money. And you used to have to have an army to ha create money. Now, if you know, like, the, a geek that can read some GitHub code, and like, boom, you have that shit done in a day. If you know someone who's good, they, they can do it in 30 minutes and you can create a currency. Now, if you want to re really recreate a different type of economy, uh, it takes a little more thought than that, but uh, it's still pretty easy, a lot easier than it's ever been. And if you look at, like, what are we, why has the fiat system, like n national currencies, why are they so awesome? Like, what do they do? Why do we use these things? Well, they use inflation to incentivize a certain type of human behavior. Mm -hmm. Specifically, they... Uh -huh have like what I would call a whitelist of approved uh, of, of people who can, of organizations that can create money out of nothing, right? These are the banks. The banks can create money out of nothing, but they can, are only allowed to do that when they make loans, mm -hmm. right? So the whole like uh, Federal Reserve System, the whole like US dollar is an incentive structure that incentivizes certain people to loan money to other people so that people can buy houses, so that people can start small businesses, big businesses, they can do other things. It kind of makes the economy move, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's great, it's cool. But it's just one thing we can do with inflation. We can build other structures. Bitcoin, what they do is they create inflation so that uh, to incentivize miners to support the network, right? And process transactions and uh, and also guess a random number. You know, I don't want to get into work so much. Uh, but what if we could create a currency that instead of guessing a random number or incentivizing, you know, giving money to banks so they can loan it to uh, people to buy houses, what if we could create a currency that would support protecting that river or ending homelessness in Barcelona? And these currencies are not, it's not about creating the money, it's about aligning incentives properly. So there's this awesome blog post by Jeff Emmett that we actually just hired Jeff and I'm so excited about it. Uh, it's basically connecting these two, what I would call crypto primitives, primitives, okay. right? Uh, to token bonding curves and curation markets. But so you're, what but, you're talking about is like this token allocation referring to uh, how people can take part in a decentralized altruistic community, right? And this is like kind of the idea behind Giveth, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, the idea behind Giveth is uh, reinventing the way we solve tragedy of the commons issues, right? Building the future of giving, you can say. And this is just one idea that we're going to pursue that's really exciting, right? So you have this token bonding curve. You have people putting Ether in. Ether stays in the contract. They get tokens. Tokens are created for a DAO. 
they can use those tokens now in what we call a curation market to actually decide how uh, which proposals should be funded with this money that's created out of nothing. Right? So like there's different variables that we can add into this system, such like if you buy this uh, if you buy this token, then it's considered a philanthropic investment and it's a bond, right? So that's not what token bonding curves really mean, but uh, I like this idea is that you can't you can't turn it in for three months, right? And if you don't want to participate in this governance system over here, this curation market, then you can delegate your stake right before you buy, right? So you kind of get two choices. Either you delegate or you get to participate in the governance yourself. Uh, when you have tokens, you get to decide which proposals uh, are the best to be funded. And maybe there's, in the curation market, maybe you have some set of rules like uh, only the top... Uh, only 10% of the pot will be used every week. Like uh, every Friday at noon, if you're in the top 20% uh, of the list and, uh, and you're chosen first and you are using less than 10% of the pot accumulatively, then your proposals get funded by the DAO, right? Okay. And so like maybe there's a proposal to uh, build a homeless shelter, but that takes more than 15% of the total pot. So that will almost never get passed. Unless, okay. of course, uh, someone else comes in and funds 5% of it on their own. And that's what's uh, really exciting here, and this is why uh, we are kind of double timing these two objectives, uh, playing with decentralized governance and making the world a better place at the same time. Here, we can work with a DAO in a open system where if, if this whole thing falls apart and it doesn't work, then uh, it's okay because other people can fund these proposals, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this, this is this is a totally open system, and this DAO is just one actor in it. And it honestly, like the cool thing with uh, DAOs with the charity is they can't really make the world a worse place. They just if they fail completely, they just don't make the world a better place. Yeah. And uh, and, and of course, uh, it would be a waste of money, but. A lot of money is already wasted in the charity system, so it's, it's probably okay. Definitely. No, it's very cool. Like, you're taking this whole self-governance thing that a lot of people are seeing or have had some experiences like Dash or PivX or Smart Cash. They do these things where it's really just like kind of self-promotion kind of motivating things. And so taking that idea and actually applying it for something that's applied in the real world that will, like, really change lives just for the whoever you're helping. So, um yeah. I, how is there, I remember reading, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, like last year about how you're also working to help connect people who want to actually volunteer time and effort rather than just like donations. Is that also uh, an aspect to give it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, our goal is to build communities around causes. And so when you create, uh, I mean, you know, the DAP, our, the Giveth DAP is still a work in progress, hmm. right? But the idea is that when you create something on the Giveth DAP, you can create a community. And you kind of have this DAP that, like, you forget all the DAO stuff, right? The DAO stuff is plugs in. But if, if we leave that apart, you have this DAP that can act like a, like a, a payment funnel or a payment processor for your community. And you can actually, without having any legal entities or anything like that, you can use smart contracts to show transparency and accountability uh, for your altruistic community and uh, when people when you create a community you instantly get a chat room right and when people donate they get added to the chat room and if uh, these donations get moved to another uh, spot because they're using the, a governance system that delegates mm -hmm. then they this person who originally donated maybe they just want to help you know, uh, Barcelona in general, but then it goes to the home, you know, helping the homeless in Barcelona, they'll get an email that says, hey, your money went to this community, here's their chat room, you know, here's what they want, and if you don't like it, you can veto, right? And so your donation, you still have some authority over your donation, and in fact, complete authority over your donation. Yeah, that's very awesome because I know there's always been a really big dis disconnect in like the traditional kind of charity giving not to mention like the big foundations where money is slipping through the cracks and you have no idea really where your money is going through. 
if it's actually being, you know, utilized smartly. So I think it's great that you guys are like working to connect people with the actual cause and, and inspire them to be an active member of, of something. I mean, because not only are you helping other people, but I mean, to be honest, like you feel good when you when you give back to you and it inspires you to do more. So I think it's really, really great. This guy, this guy actually uh, I, I put us uh, made a blog post the other day. He's uh, matching any donation to give it. Uh, oh, yeah. We put up five years here to match it. And he's like, listen, you can donate or whatever, but remember, this is something that will make you better. This is a selfish act, and that's that's okay. So, uh, what kind of support have you seen in like with the either the Ethereum community or like the cryptocurrency community in general towards Giveth? Have you seen like are you getting a lot of people who are interested in helping you work with it? Uh, like, are you you're in the are you in the alpha stage with it right now, or you're helping? people kind of develop the DAP as it goes. So uh, what does your team look like? Or what do you need help with? Do you, are you looking for more people to, you know, to be a part of, of helping develop Giveth? Yeah, we're always looking for people. Uh, like I said, we just hired two people and we could probably hire more. For the most part, we're uh, a ragtag community. You know, we don't, uh, Giveth is not going to pay well. That's just the way it is in the nonprofit space. Uh, and we might, uh, but we do have really good connections in the Ethereum community. Uh, we are, we're really well supported. Uh, we're well loved within this space. And another thing, just really quick, I gotta mm -hmm. give a shout out to our new system that we're putting in place called the Unicorn DAC. So another thing that we found is that uh, there's really, I, I, I also do a lot of uh, funding of this organization myself, either through, uh, I don't really collect like any time I do something and someone pays me, I just put it in to give it. I don't really collect a salary. I was lucky enough to be in crypto early enough, mm -hmm. and I, I don't need that much money to live. So uh, I, you know, a lot of the funding for this comes through me, and then I just get to decide where the money goes. But that's plutocracy, right? That's not why we're here. That's that's a really shitty governance model. Uh, I hope I can swear. I'm no, sorry. you're good. Uh, you're good. <laughs> But like, uh, so we're creating this thing called the Unicorn DAC, where when any donation comes into the Giveth DAC, that's like our main donation pot, uh, it's actually going to be governed by anyone who has fulfilled the onboarding process to become a unicorn, right? Okay. And so every unicorn will get a certain amount of money every week that they can dish out to any milestones within Giveth. Because right now, I just put money where I think it needs to go and that's just stupid right like I don't have the perfect perspective yeah but there's a whole lot of people that see things that need to be done and they're only allowed to put a quarter of it into any projects that they're doing or they can actually just for being a unicorn it's almost like a really small universal basic income unicorn basic income right it's very very small but they can just give it to themselves but then the other 75% they have to go to other people other other people's projects hmm. and and then we can do like a decentralized fund management system so yeah i'm really excited about that cool so uh you mentioned a little bit about how giveth io could be like a 20-year project hopefully it goes on for 20 something years and it's successful uh, do you see yourself being a part of this like for the very very long term or are you like kind of dancing around and not like not that you're gonna give up on giveth or anything but like what else are you working on? Do you have any other kind of inspirational things going on in your life or what's, what's happening? Yeah, so, so Giveth is a community focused on blockchain for good, right? So we have a lot of projects that are, you can't have blockchain for good if you don't have a good blockchain, right? So like, if we can't really have DAOs if we don't have decentralization infrastructure. Uh, I'm really excited about mesh networks. I don't have mm. any projects yeah. working with them, but can you have a DAO if, you know, everybody's using Comcast to access the internet. I mean, like, get out yeah, of here. Yeah. We, we have real infrastructural challenges that we need to do. And mesh networks are really cool. Uh, but I'm also working on this project called uh, Dapno. So uh, right now we have a huge centralization with it in Fura. And uh, in, in general, AWS and, and uh, DigitalOcean also. Like, if so many people don't run clients on their own hardware. Mm -hmm. I, I, 
I don't have we don't have any solid numbers on this, but when I talk to devs, they they don't run their client on hardware they own, right? So we have probably over half the network. I'm sure over half the network is being run on outside services, Infura, DigitalOcean, AWS, and all these other decentralized servers around the world that are owned by giant, you know, data centers. Where as uh, DapNode is trying to create and uh, trying to make it easy for people to run their own servers at home. In fact, they, it, it, the idea is kind of to do what Bitcoin did with ASIC miners, where you, you can buy this little box and it's cool. You know, you run this little box in your house and you're making money just by plugging it in and doing maybe a little configuration, right? But with, with DapNode, we have we want that model, uh, except not for ASIC mining more for proof of stake and other decentralized network uh, services uh, like uh, Zencash. We, we have Zencash on there. Status is working on a relayer for messages. And it's called DAP node because it can be a, a lot of DAPs can use it as a helper uh, so that they can pay people to run a decent, to be part of their decentralized network and aid in their decentralization. And so you can, what's really cool though is you can buy this box It'll run Ethereum and IPFS and uh, a bunch of other things by default. You can put a Monero, you can two clicks install a Monero node, right? And you don't have to worry about all these problems because it's set up, makes it really easy so you can be part of any peer-to-peer -peer network that you want as long as it's in the DAP node store, right? Even though it's, you don't buy anything, it's not, there's nothing to buy, it's just like as long as somebody created a Docker image and put it so it's easy for DAP node users, right? Hmm. And uh, these, what, but the coolest part is, if you have a DAP node, all of your friends and family can you use you like they would use Infura. They can just point their MetaMask to your DAP node, and then they don't have, they can trust you to give them the truth because they, you don't know the truth of the blockchain unless you're running your own node. For sure. Then, you, otherwise, you're trusting Infura, you're trusting AWS to send you packets and you have to hope that they're not messing with it. And here, it's like, if you know a couple of people with DAP nodes, you know, you're good, you're golden, you'll be fine. And you actually know those people, yeah. uh, even that person. And, and so then we can actually have a decentralized hardware system. Um, another project that I'm working on is called IDEN3. IDEN3 is really important. It's a, just the, the most basic level of identity systems hmm. where any yeah. identity can make a claim on any other identity and I think this is I mean so important for everything I want to do because DAOs without identity DAOs are just plutocracy you know we can do plutocracy great like no <laughs> problem you know the DAO as long as you had a lot of DAO tokens you had influence just buy your influence buy power Right? Sounds like great governance mechanisms. This is what will change. This is not going to change the world. I'm sorry. It's going to make the world worse, yeah, probably. Right? We we need better solutions besides plutocracy, and to do that, we need decentralized identity. So, what's really cool with this system is that you can choose who is the authority on different identities. So, like uh, any anybody can make a, any claim on any other person. I can say, hey, your hair looks great. You know. Like a simple claim, right? I can say, yeah, you're over 18. And maybe I own a bar. And that bar would accept any ID, uh, any claim from the United States government, from the state of Nevada, from Las Vegas, from the owner of the bar, from this guy, this old dude, Grandpa Billy, who's really trustworthy, you know, they trust him to tell you if this guy's over 18, right? Uh, and, and then... Any of those things would work for the bartender. Maybe that way you would not actually need, uh, you don't need to tell the bartender that you're an organ donor or what your birthday is. Hmm. You can use ZK snarks to like prove this information that you're over 18. And then we use other techniques to make it private by default. You know, it's, it's the identity system that we want to see for decentralized governance. It doesn't have a token or any of this garbage. It's just a simple identity system, you know, from the ground up. And we're, I think, the, I, I, amazingly, there aren't other identity systems that are integrating with ZK Snarks. 
for the most part because they don't have the crazy devs that we do. <laughs> so uh, the White Hat group is just full of amazing people. Yeah, but, um, that's that's super yeah. interesting too to, uh, with using ZK Snarks with X. I know like I keep, when you mentioned this, I thought of Civic, but that's different. And so to have con confirmation of identity without sacrificing your privacy, uh, that's that's like that's the dream, right? Because <laughs> that's why everyone you know doesn't want to release their identity or whatever. It's because it's not safe. So that's yeah, really you interesting. Should able, you should be able to choose, like, selectively reveal your identity, and then that person who you reveal your identity to, they shouldn't be able to prove your identity, right? Like, and that's we have this cool little trick. Uh, you know, you need the ZK Snark circuit, right? Uh, I don't, if you want to know more about ZK Snarks, Jordy actually made, with IDEN3, we have this awesome blog post. Jordy made a programming language for ZK, Jordy Bellina, uh, my partner in crime all the time, right? Uh, we, he made a programming language uh, with the help of many other people, for sure, and a, a compiler that makes it really easy to play with ZK Snarks. It's called Circum. Circum, and, okay. Uh, yeah, you can go uh, on our blog post and you can actually create your own ZK Snarks circuit. So, like in Zcash, there's one circuit with a trusted setup, and that makes it so that you can have anonymous transactions, right? But if you want to have anonymous voting, you need another circuit. If you want to have anonymous posting on Gitcoin, right, you need a different circuit. And so, this is a really fundamental tool for developers to build using this technology. And it's really easy now. Of course, it's still probably buggy. I wouldn't like do your anonymous voting and trust that it's going to work. Yeah. You know, hey, it works early days still, but uh, but it's there. And uh, what's really cool is you can uh, show your identity to that bartender. And we have this trick where you say either I'm over 18 or I know the private key to your public key. Right? So he okay. has to give you the public key, and then you can make a circuit that says either I know your private key or I'm over 18. Okay. And obviously, he knows I don't know his private key, so I must be over 18. Now, if he s sends that proof, that ZK Snark proof, because he doesn't ha get any of my identity information, right? But he does say that I am over 18 or I have his private key. If he shows that proof to somebody else, it means absolutely nothing. Yeah. Because of course he knows the private key to his public key. Or let's say they don't know it's his address. Yeah, okay, so he knows the private key to some random address. Who cares, right? It doesn't mean anything. And so that way we can selectively reveal identity information to specific people. That's so cool. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, and it's super scalable. Like. Uh, you can do thousands and thousands of identities and, and use Merkle magic, just um, make a badass Merkle tree, and then uh, put that with one transaction on Ethereum blockchain. Right? So it gets, it's a really cool project, really excited about it. I have so many other projects too. Um, there's this Tenograph project, which I think is really important. Uh, right now there's this Bitcoin Cash hard fork. Mm -hmm. so if you go to cash.coin.dance, you can go see like the consensus of the Bitcoin Cash network. And we need something like that for Ethereum. We need to know what different stakeholders are thinking about different Ethereum improvements and different Ethereum topics. What do you think about EIP 999, which will, you know, release fund, you know, uh, the people, the parody hat that, that got their fun stuff. You know, what do different people think about it? Right now, you have to go cruise Twitter and like yeah. meet and like gather all that data from all this place and you, all the noise and people on Reddit like block stream like just like paying people to be trolls, right? Like you don't have to worry about that if you can have a website that cuts down the noise and different stakeholders can share their opinions or really all of that data, that all that data gathering can be put in one place. You can have coin votes. Now, mining votes, you can have gas voting, which is really interesting. Like, if you use a lot of gas, then you're a user of the network. Mm -hmm. And so that you can give users their opinion. That's a project by Slocket. And really, this, this website, is its goal is to aggregate 
different sources of uh, stakeholder opinions and then allow them to be easily accessible for anybody to consume or even to participate. What's the other one? I don't know. I got, I, I got, oh my God, I almost forgot. Like, I'm spending almost, like, other than Give It, the one I spend my most of the time on is uh, the Argon JC. Yeah. Which is decentralizing development for the Argon team. So, Argon is a DAO project. They're building DAOs so that everyone, and they're live on mainnet. Hmm. So, you can actually have your own DAO right now. I think it's mainnet.argon.org. You can just deploy your own DAO, right? Right now, it's still simple. It's uh, you can have a democracy, but it works. And uh, I use it mostly on Rinkeby because it's kind of expensive on mainnet, hmm. but uh, it's still pretty cool. And we're building a second dev team to help decentralize the development, so that if the Argon team goes crazy or something, it's okay. There's still other devs and other people that are working on the same code base, and we can fork it. And, and check their authority, right? And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and we're actually hiring right now. We have so many roles. Uh, we're still looking for important leadership roles, uh, a project manager that's more of like a full stack dev experience at least, but project manager, management focused, uh, who can uh, really lead the dev team. Ideally, you have some experience in DAOs and blockchain tech and, you know, you're a crazy anarchist or something. <laughs> and, uh, and then also a UX researcher that's also kind of uh, more on a project management role. We're kind of building two teams uh, to lead this community, and we need the leaders of those two teams. That's very cool. I mean, you're working on so many things that are needed in this space and that I think in the future they're going to be, like, really valuable. So I appreciate your work. And, and uh I mean, you're, yeah, you have so much going on. So I will leave links to all that information down below in the video description too. Is there any kind of like a timeline for Giveth and like maybe when people can expect to hopefully take part in that at some time? Do you have any idea? Yeah, well, if you are uh, really savvy with blockchain tech, like you're, I don't have to worry about you losing your keys or anything <laughs> like that. Then, and, and you're willing to make issues on GitHub when you run across bugs, then you are probably able to onboard your uh, nonprofit project. We do have normal like uh, projects. There's one for, uh, there's, there's a bunch of really cool projects up there. One is like uh, uh, special needs kids who like to drum for like meditation and we're supporting buying drums for them. And there's a, there's a few other projects, but that's led by you know a security researcher uh, and uh, a dev, so I, I trust that <laughs> yeah. you not have any problems with your teeth. Like, I don't know if people outside the industry understand how much support is needed for user-facing dApps. Mm. It's like the support team is bigger than the rest of the organization. Right? For all these exchanges, my crypto, all these groups, it's just support, support, support. So I don't, I'm not ready for that. That's why it's like we kind of have gotcha. uh, a lot there. But yeah. if you if you are savvy, come on in, and we would love to uh, support your nonprofit. And uh, as far as contact information, you can always follow Giveth at Giveth IO on Twitter, and um, I'm at Griff, I'm at the Griff T on Twitter, right? Uh, two Fs, the Griff T. And uh, yeah, there's there's a jobs posting on Argon's wiki, wiki.argon.org. You can find the job postings and you can apply. Uh, you should probably read those before contacting me because <laughs> they tell you how to, what we actually want. And uh, I, I make these Twitter posts and people reach out. I'm like, clearly you haven't read those. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that's okay. That's good. I, I, yeah. mean, it's, it's, I, I like people who are excited. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a bunch of links, too, where they can see all these projects. There's so many of them. Yeah, for sure. Um, Send them all over. And, and really, thank you, Heidi. Like, I used to, you know, I used to be really uh, an evangelist. That was, like, that's how I got into crypto. In 2014, I went to Ecuador and was just, like, trying to get everyone into Bitcoin. And I've, uh, I've kind of lost it because now I, all I do is work with people who uh, are, like, deep in the crypto yeah, space. Yeah, you're in it. So, 
Yeah, I, I've lost the ability to talk to like people who are just starting. I'm not as good at it as I used to be. So like, thank you so much for picking up my slack. You know, like, <laughs> I'm doing it way better because uh, uh, never reached nearly the people that you guys do. So no, nah, uh, everyone, uh, everyone's learning. So yeah, I'm I'm super excited to have you on the show and to let people understand where you're coming from, who you are, you know, what you're working on, and just like an example of someone who is dedicated to the crypto space and, and is doing like a lot of good. So I think it's great. Hopefully our audience here will check out all these really cool things that they can get excited about for cryptocurrency. I know Bitcoin was doing a little tanking today. So people are yeah. probably uh, not too excited about it. So this is a really good example that like, you know, platforms are still being built. Uh, it's not dying by any means. So yeah, something to get excited about. So thanks. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll be leaving your contact information down below so people can check you out. And uh, I hope you have a great day, Griff. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks for letting me rant. I went off. Though. No, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.